My name is Jim Copenhaver, and I am the Director of Enterprise Solutions at SPINS here. I'm also the product manager for our store level data initiatives, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, this is application number five of store level data. So just to refresh your memory, this is how do I better monitor compliance, timing, and performance of in-store events. So a central tenet of this module and application is the fact and the distinction between baseline movement and promotional events. So most of you probably know that a promotional event would be, hey, I'm featuring this product in my retailer ad this week. I'm putting up a display of this product. I'm reducing the price on it. Or the holy grail is I got an ad with a display in the store and a reduced price. And when those things happen, uh, what the retailer and the manufacturer are betting on is I will get higher volume that yields more dollars because that higher volume at the lower price generates more dollars. And you fail in a promotion if you reduce the price by 20% and do all those activities and get 5% lift. You found a way to make less money on your promotion than you did on your baseline movement. So how do we use store level data? Well, obviously when you do those types of things, uh, the basic premise underneath here is called baseline versus incremental. So baseline is the math that we do and many others do to determine what is the plain vanilla movement for this product. So if you looked over a long period of time for the periods where there wasn't a promotion or a price reflection happening, you'll see that the average movement for this product per, for the retailer or per store is 100 cases a week. So now anytime that we put it on promotion, we're looking for something more than 100 cases a week and we call that increment the lift. So if I ran a four week promotion and during that four week promotion, I was averaging 20, 120 cases, then our lift for that promotion was we were getting 20 more cases than the baseline based on our ad, our display or our price reduction. So we use store level data when we put a promotion in play to measure what was the lift. And we can do that across stores. So obviously what you'll see at the chain, we might say, hey, I got 20% lift for that event at, we'll use Publix again, at Publix. Well, obviously that didn't happen uniformly across stores. And what you'll see is some of the stores got 60 or 70% lift and some of them only got 10% lift. And some of them, heaven forbid, maybe got no lift. They still did 100 cases a week, even with our promotion. So store level data lets us get in there and see a couple of things. The first one is, am I getting compliance across the chain with my promotion? So if you look at it, you can say, gee, I know that uh, I wanted a promotional price of $1.69. Did I get it? Yes, I did. In 70 of 100 stores, I got $1.69 or better. In the remaining 30, I either got the parity to what I wanted or I got less. Uh, and that's a promotion compliance issue that we can take up with the retailer and it hurts our lift, you know, obviously if they don't achieve that price point. The other thing is, as I mentioned, if they run me in an ad, I will get, I should get a certain amount of lift. If they display me, I'll get another amount of lift. And if they simply price reduce me, I'll get a third amount. What I've found in the 30 some years that I've been here is ad gives you across most products the most lift, followed by display, and then the coming in third is price reduction alone, no display, no ad. And as I mentioned, if you get all three of them, you will see a significant increase in your lift. So I can look at the store level data and I can look at the lift and I can generally infer you know, whether I got the triad or whether I got the display and the price reduction or whether I simply got the price reduction. And it again informs the conversation with the retailer. It says, I looked at the store level data, it seems to me that we didn't get all of the compliance or the max lift out of this thing looking at the store level data. So as I look at that, that's how we do it. Now, don't confuse using the store level data to understand baseline and increment with things like our product trade ROI. What trade ROI is doing is a little bit more sophisticated math and what they're trying to determine is what's the optimal combination of things. So for example, I mentioned that across most products, getting an ad and a display and a price reduction gives you the highest increment. What trade ROI will start to determine is, let's say that if the retailer said, I want $5,000 for price reduction, I want $10,000 for price reduction and display, and I want $20,000 for price display ad. 
what trade ROI will do is to go in and say, for the additional increment, let's say the increment between getting the price in the display and getting all three, the increment is only 30%. In that example, the retailer is saying, I want 100% more money to get the third element. What trade ROI will help you understand is paying 100% more money for 30% more lift is not a smart decision. And trade ROI will help you make those decisions to say, where do I get the most bang for my buck? Going back to store level data, it will tell us about compliance and it will tell us about movement and differences in movement across the stores. It won't tell us what's the smartest investment for every dollar spent for promotion. For that, you'll need something like trade ROI. So now the question becomes, hey, I'm already buying spins data. Is this a natural extension to it? Sure, you're already buying categories and channels, and in a lot of cases, you're probably buying key accounts. This is the next step. It says, after I understand my world from those dimensions, I now want to understand it at store level, and there are going to be new things that I couldn't see at key account level that now become revealed to me. But in talking to our sales reps, especially the ones who call on newer accounts or smaller accounts, their question to me, which is a very logical question, is, hey, Jim, instead of starting at the top and cascading down, why wouldn't smaller brands use store-level data as their entry point for insights and information? And as I thought about it, I was like, yeah, that's a great idea. I never thought of that before. So the other way to think about this is you may not be buying key account data. You may not be buying channel data. You could start with, hey, I'm a million dollar brand and I'm distributed in these places. I'd like to know what my distribution is in fresh time. And I'd like to know how many stores I'm in and what price point I'm getting. So uh, another application courtesy of our sales force and the people who call on those accounts, yes, it would be a perfectly good application to start your journey with spins at store level data and then graduate into key accounts and channels. So whether you run this problem from the top down, you're currently buying the information and it's an extension to get more granular, or you're not sure where to start, but you don't necessarily want to start at the macro view of the world, or you don't have the budget to start at the macro view of the world, store level data through spins is a good way to get in and do a bite-sized chunk and then graduate from there into more information, uh, more investments, and obviously those would be fueled through growth in your business. So we would like to be on this journey with you and information and insights, store level data is one of the pieces that we bring uh, and we'd love to talk to you further about your particular needs and how store level data through spins can help you grow your business.